Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you with another episode of This Week in Runeterra. Today, just a few things to cover before we roll over into the new expansion. We are expecting some, hopefully some patch notes very, very soon. So I'll be doing a separate video on that. But today, we're going to go over Deck of the Week, Clip of the Week. Talk about Zoe and Riven today briefly. As well as sharing, you know, some of my opinions and thoughts about the seasonal tournament as a whole. I know everybody's been leaving their feedback. I'm going to leave mine in a vocal form on this video in case it gets picked up by Riot at any point. Besides that, just uh, congratulating the seasonal tournament winners. I'll show the names up on screen very shortly. You guys have a fantastic day. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new here as we roll into the new expansion. It's going to be plenty of content here for you guys to see. Have a good day. So over the weekend, we had our first official top 32 for the seasonal tournament battle it out for the Monuments of Power tournament. This was our first official seasonal tournament and a big stepping stone forward for Legends of Runeterra. In a moment, I'm going to bring up each and every individual winner that we had across all regions. So Push P, or as the meme at the moment, going to be in the clip of the week very shortly, but his name is based off uh, the Yoshi as it gets mounted. If you can imagine that noise, that is his names. He is our America's winner. Peepin Ho is going to be our SE Asia winner, Southeast Asia winner that is. Reroll for Asia, which is Japan, Korea. Uh, congratulations. And then from Europe, again, big congratulations to each and every one of these players. They've all done a very fantastic job and I cannot wait for the next seasonal tournament. So I want to jump straight into Deck of the Week today because, you know, I'm only going to be covering this, covering this uh, very, very briefly because, you know, new expansion soon. Uh, we've seen just about every deck there is right now. Uh, but this one, I guess, takes the spotlight. This is actually one of Push P's uh, best performing decks that he used to win the Americas uh, Seasonal Tournament. This was his Darius, the Sejuani. Very similar to like the Darius Overwhelm aggro deck. But I thought this one looked unique and we have seen... Uh, similar versions of this list in the past, but some of the card choices here were kind of interesting and definitely deserves the spotlight on today's deck of the week. And it does seem fitting as it's for one of our winners from the seasonal tournament. Uh, I do like the inclusion here of like the Noxian Fervor and Death's Hand. I find those few cards very interesting. And of course the Ancient Yeti, uh, which has been seeing some, a fair bit of experimentation over the past couple months, but still a pretty interesting set of cards all in one deck, including the Wolf Rider as well. I definitely thought this one could take the spotlight for today and yeah don't worry guys i mean in the next few uh, this week's in rune terrace i'm sure there's going to be a lot of decks to cover with the new expansion but anyway uh, once again deck of the week goes out to this one a link is in the description One of the other fun and exciting segments of each week is going to be Clip of the Week. This one's not going to feature any gameplays, but I thought it was a really heartfelt moment and just it was nice to see this happen live on stream and all the casters and just this really humble and good laughing moment. I just, you guys will see it. If you don't know about it, you're going to find out about it very shortly. One question to ask you here. We have one question. In context, we're talking to Pushpi, the winner from Americas, by the way, and they only have one question to ask him. ...to ask you here, have we been pronouncing your name wrong this entire time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's, it's... I mean, you can say push P, but... The real... The, re, the real name is like, when Yoshi gets mounted, like, it sounds like... Psh, psh. Oh, oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I know exactly the same uh, <laughs> That's... Wow, that amazing. was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Amazing. That's an amazing name, by the way. I need to give you full credit for an absolute Very, very name humble name moment. That we have no chance of wow. getting right. Yeah. So this, this clip actually got 2,000 views, which is a little crazy. So that was a pretty... I guess it definitely deserves a spotlight for today's uh, clip of the week. So obviously, I am going to be a little bit late to the party. I've already reacted to this, I've already seen Zoe, I've already seen Riven. But today, I just want to give my quick thoughts and just my overall expectations and how I see this card slowly adapting to 
the meta because even though we're getting this little collection of cards i don't think it's going to shake up things too much i think what will actually shake up the meta more is going to be what they do in terms of nerfs and buffs coming into patch 1.16 but without further ado we did receive zoe and uh it's a one mana one mana one one with elusive we've seen similar champions to this such as timo fizz uh timo uh fizz they're very very with there maybe a slight exception to fizz but they're very uh susceptible to just kind of getting pinged off super early in the game and this card is going to be no different however it comes with a pretty powerful effect in terms of the nexus strike being able to generate those super cool uh, star charts which pretty much turn into invoke a celestial card that, that costs a three or less at burst speed not fleeting by the way you know when i first saw this card i jumped to the conclusion that i thought the card would be fleeting as uh plenty of cards like this that generate cards like this actually tend to be fleeting but this one is not fleeting so let's say zoe connects to face once and you get a super cool star chart i think that's pretty good value for what uh zoe can potentially do the flip condition is very difficult like it's like you could aim to flip zoe in a deck right but that would mean building a very specific deck and would without a doubt i'd say the only way to do that is to actually go into um probably uh, a mixture of pnz and targon for mostly suit up suit up i see being one of the most powerful cards in terms of being able to buff cheap units to keep them healthy suit up being probably one of the more uh, strong ways of doing this alternatively maybe uh demacia for some tough synergy or alternatively uh dipping into just mainly just mostly targon right so you can try and utilize maybe some of the uh support cards that will buff but yeah i think in terms of zoe actually being a masterpiece card and carry for any deck that really seems like a stretch for most metagames at least with the current collection of cards we've pretty much seen everything there is right now and i don't think anything's truly going to help zoe to become like the deck the star piece but i think zoe can be really fitting for some targon decks like we've seen some experimentation with uh, mixtures of targon with other regions that play like a really soul for example and are just more of like a late game control deck i can definitely see zoe potentially being the uh, second champion for those decks where you don't focus too much on it but sometimes you can kind of use its early game to buy some tempo and then you know obviously probably something's going to happen to zoe it's going to get cleared it's going to get traded off and then you'll be curving out into more uh big resources anyway these targon decks tend to have a lot of invoke synergy and zoe does come with a plethora of invoke synergy and can definitely like replace for example in leona decks you can go like leona and zoe instead of doing like leona and diana and with a really soul instead of going like a really soul and like going into demacia you can go pure targon and maybe go a really soul and zoe i like the idea a couple of ideas i do have just kind of like uh, spiraling up in my head is a mono targon deck essentially with a really soul and zoe uh zoe alongside some of the other new cards here pretty much to go through the early game maybe get some lucky generation by connecting face with zoe or forcing my opponent to use some resources into clearing them and then having a really soul kind of be like the late game engine it just seems like a really cool piece to have like a kind of a lot more stronger early game uh, for these late game targon decks to provide tempo especially with the uh one of the other new cards here stary scamp to be more specific i would really want to be running that card in this deck i think without like the starry scamp the, the idea doesn't seem as uh, enticing but i think starry scamp is actually more of a highlight piece for this kind of archetype than what zoe actually is it makes so much more sense to play like a zoe starry scamp in all these invoking synergy cards uh, alongside all together then it would just kind of like piecing zoe with another deck or just kind of like making a uh targon a tempo deck with starry scamp i think you definitely want to play these cards together the way they've been uh the way they've been created just seems like you really want to play them together but yeah i don't think zoe is gonna be like that much of a game breaker but i think it's really cool to exist in the game and i am happy with its flavor and just the design of it i think it's really cool and zoe flipping is gonna be like twisted fate flipping it's gonna be like if it ever does flip you're gonna get tons of value and it's going to happen sometimes.
And then of course our most recent addition to the game was uh, Riven. This is the final piece of the puzzle, the final collection of cards to be revealed. And I will say uh, Riven does seem very strong, ignoring its effects in general. 3 mana, 3-4 three, is pretty much crazy enough. I mean the Badger Bears are quite nuts. This is the most similar example in comparison is going to be some of the Demacia's higher studded minions but now having one featured in Noxus and it does come with a pretty powerful effect I think Riven is definitely going to be a game changer for some decks um, I'm not going to say that it's going to be I'm not going to say that it's going to be extremely oppressive because I think we're just going to have to jump into the experimentation and see uh, just where Riven belongs, whether or not it's going to be like more aggro lenient or more control lenient. Uh, some of the opinions I've heard uh, back from the community is that Riven does seem like a very flexible card that it's going to sort into many, many, many different decks. And there was like the... I kind of agreed with one of Swim's posts as well, how he mentioned Riven is going to replace Ezreal in Ezreal and Draven decks. And I'm actually in kind of agreement with him because uh, my opinion on that deck in particular is that Captain Farron carries it. Ezreal is just a tool uh, value generator and uh, Ezreal sometimes feels underwhelming in that deck. I think Riven could actually be a much stronger tool for that kind of strategy. But then you're kind of splashing Riven into more of a control deck where I do think this card can be quite aggressive as well. It may spawn some new archetypes, but it probably won't be anything too new. It'll be like kind of like revisiting some of the old archetypes, such as like Harrowing Darius we saw in the past uh, with running the Basilisk Rider. I think maybe like revisiting some of the Mono Noxus decks could be very enticing at the moment, especially like if you want to like curve out Riven into Basilisk Rider. You can start to get some pretty crazy stats on board and start to be really threatening. And then of course you can go for the... Um, the alternative like win condition of maybe splashing into uh, Shadow Wilds for Harrowing and revisiting pretty much that same archetype or maybe looking to splash Nox with other regions. I think Riven is going to allow a lot of flexible deck building and I really look forward to this one. I think Riven out of all the champions we saw between Zoe and uh, oh my goodness I've already forgotten the first uh, champion that was revealed. Uh, Victor. Between uh, Zoe and Victor, Riven does seem like the highlight card and probably one that's going to see the most experimentation. You could also play Riven with Victor. That's actually not a bad opportunity too either. I think it'd be quite cool to see like a PNZ Noxus control deck, but we've already got that right. We've got Ezreal Draven, but this one's just going to provide different cards. Uh, Riven does seem like a power creep on some of the other champions in the game, but uh, yeah. Um, as for the Reforge mechanic in general, it's quite an interesting one. I don't actually fully understand what happens when you make the blade. I've got, I'm going to have to like backtrack and have another look at it. But I imagine once you reforge and get a piece, um, even if you play it, that piece is going to exist in your hand. Like not exist, but like once you've played all the weapon pieces, I don't think you have to have them all together. But um, once you've played them all, you'll get the a blade of exile, which will flip Riven. And what's really cool is like uh, Riven's flip condition is kind of unlike anything else we've seen before because it needs to have the Blade of Edge in hand. So that's like I see Blade of Edge in your hand. So you can't even like pre-play it if you want to flip Riven. That's going to create some unique circumstances where uh, players will be using Riven and will not be playing the Blade prematurely without having Riven on the field. Uh, but it really depends on the deck's strategy and whether or not it kind of just wants to go more aggressive anyway. Uh, but Riven being able to double its stats, I mean, as soon as you start adding Overwhelm onto Riven, uh, you're going to see some pretty crazy buffs on it. And unless it's dealt with early, can kind of snowball. So Riven's going to be an extremely snowball-y card, along with a Reforge mechanic. And uh, one of the other highlightable cards to talk about just for a moment. Is actually going to be survival skills. We haven't seen a card quite like this yet in Runeterra. Uh, some of the cards we see revealed throughout expansions kind of like they're new but they come with very similar mechanics but survival skills is going to start to add some new depth into the game which I can really respect and um, some of the inclusions like for using this card is going to be discard aggro and actually playing this on curve. You probably wouldn't run too many of this. You might run one for 
in discard aggro for example you could play this and then swing at your opponent but the thing is like they're gonna need to block your units because you're playing an aggressive deck but then everything's gonna survive as well which is really nuts nuts and sometimes you can even just discard this from your hand and protecting jinx a lot of the time i think it's gonna see some experimentation at discard aggro depending on whether or not we see some nerfs to that deck but i think we're gonna definitely see survival skills slotting into some uh many forms of noxus very cool card but yeah that's gonna wrap it up for the new cards today uh the final the final section of this video the final section of this video i just want to like go over my thoughts about the seasonal tournament because everybody's been kind of leaving their feedback on twitter and riot's been kind of listening to everything they've been listening to everyone's feedback reading watching listening all of the above and um one of the hottest topics is actually just going to be like the format uh everyone knows at this point that the seasonal tournament itself the in-game client and everything about the aesthetics the play the smoothness we don't we can all agree that it was just super super presentable and just very well executed and polished the in-game tournament uh client is a cut above the rest and i don't think any other game is ever going to be able to match quite a masterpiece now the real the real topic to talk about is the format and if you want to get a lot more specific about it it's going to be the fact of like the single elimination or double elimination or you know that specific matter and um to that i just want to say in my opinion in in terms of like me myself and I, like i don't really mind how the format is um i think it being single lem uh single elimination and having you know this shorter period of time uh for day one is you know uh it makes a lot of logical sense for a lot of people and a lot of reasons uh the logistics of it is obviously going to be it's more accessible to a wider range of players and it allows uh for more people to play that might not otherwise because of time issues single elimination cuts uh a day a tournament almost in half you wouldn't believe it but like five rounds of single elimination versus nine rounds of double elimination it can sometimes go for a very very long time and now i think riot does have a very good system in terms of being able to experiment with other styles whether it be double elimination or not because they have that uh, in-game timer which actually worked out pretty pretty damn well like it was very it felt really 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 well balanced but um um for the people that first played i think it was who first played it may have been one of the asian uh, regions they were in for a bit of a shock because they weren't ready for it but yeah i think adding just a little bit more time to the the um so i think each player got seven minutes and a half until it started got to go into overtime i think increasing that number is going to be a little bit important moving forward because um i did tune in a fair bit to see um a lot of high tier players you know um just rushing a lot of turns because i had no time left but to be fair it doesn't really affect me and i don't think it affects most of the players but it it still does seem like a pretty short amount of time for like 50 minutes per round best of three in a card game that still does seem quite short in general i think increasing it even like five minutes can make such a big difference and maybe turning that uh seven minutes and a half before you go into overtime turning that into maybe like even eight to eight minutes and a half will make a tremendous amount of difference and allow uh, really good players to shine but you know i don't think that's going to affect most of the players and i think uh once people get used to it maybe it just won't be much of a concern so that really is not much of an issue now i think the the only real opinion that i would share of my own uh beliefs is that single elimination with 1024 players trying to qualify for top 32 honestly that seems fine i think like what they might want to really consider is changing something with the top 32 if not the entire tournament at least the top 32 eventually this is because having still single elimination with a top 32 cut a top cut of players single elimination you know i think maybe there could be just something different whether or not it's double elimination or just like single elimination but with like more decks so you can create a more uh craft a better strategy might 
it might be a thing to consider because I think just kind of like running into top 32 and then kind of continuing on with the same uh, system is just going to lead to the similar issues of before where um, you do kind of put your hands, you, you do kind of like put your fate in the hands of pick and ban. I think pick and ban was just the biggest coin flip of the entire tournament. And I think increasing maybe the amount of decks each player would bring, at least in the top 32, uh, might allow for players to build a more, you know, strategic lineup and maybe increase or decrease, depending on how you look at it, the variance of pick and ban and just the matchups and stuff. But that should really do it. I mean, I personally don't have any issue with it. I think if they kept it the same and we just kept going into the future, every seasonal tournament was single elimination, I wouldn't complain. Uh, some people might, but you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I'm gonna keep battling it out each season. Uh, maybe eventually I'm gonna be feeling a bit disappointed about single elimination. If I like maybe don't qualify after, you know, two, three, four seasonal tournaments, I might start to feel, you, you can probably start to see how that will kind of affect your mentality if you're just kind of getting roasted by single elimination each tournament, but uh, maybe there's a way to kind of overcome that by bringing a certain lineup and just kind of like reducing that amount of variance and just kind of coin flip. But yeah, I'm still very happy with it and I honestly can't wait for the next one. As soon as I was completed on the day, even though yeah, I went three and two and uh, I lost my very, very first match, all I could do was think about like the next one. I just, I am so keen and I'm so happy that they're doing them every two months. I am generally astonished with their, you know, their ability to have talked about doing something. This is uh, for Riot. I'm astonished by your ability to do something and then execute on it and do it. You guys are fantastic. Keep up the good uh, work. All right, so this is, the, this, this is my like ninth take, literally recording an outro. Uh, what a joke. I really gotta stop putting so much time and effort into such pointless things. Uh, basically, all I'm saying is leave a like <laughs> and subscribe if you are new here for some more Legends of Terror content. I, I don't know why I record these things so many times, but wouldn't it be funny if I just put this into the video?